If there's one symbol that epitomized the Chrysler Corporation in the mid and late 1960s as well as the 1970s, it's this Pentastar logo. It was rolled out for the 1963 model year and gradually made its way throughout many vehicles in the Chrysler lineup in the coming years, to the point at which in the 1970s it was pretty universal on Chrysler products. But what is the origins of this particular Pentastar logo? Well, nobody can be exactly sure, but one of the stories goes that the Pentastar logo came about because of a particular engine that Chrysler made in the Second World War. And this isn't just your average engine. This is a seemingly super complicated 30 cylinder, 1253 cubic inch engine. And that is the Chrysler A57 multibank engine. Chrysler began producing multibank engines in 1941. It, it really was an interesting gestation process for this engine. Chrysler was already producing a 251 cubic inch six cylinder flathead engine. And as a consequence, they decided to effectively mate five of them together and bolted them to a central crankcase. Take a look at this picture here and you'll see five gears that are centered on a main gear. Well, each of those five gears is effectively the crankshaft of one of the banks of the multi-bank engine. And then that central gear is what powers the cooling fan as well as the fan clutch and the transmission in the tank. It's seemingly an odd setup, but it ended up proving to be relatively successful, particularly after Chrysler solved some teething issues, which we'll discuss in a second. And these A57 multibank engines made it into about 109 Lee tanks and 7,500 Sherman tanks during World War II. Most of those Sherman tanks were supplied to the British. And the U.S. tanks used a more conventional, if you can call it, that had 4GAA V8, which is the subject of another video on this channel. That's the V8 engine that Ford produced for the Sherman tanks. That was a 60-degree V8, 1,100 cubic inches, double overhead cam with a flat plane crank. Pretty sweet engine as well, but not as complicated as this Chrysler A57 multibank. In any case, as I mentioned, there were some teething problems associated with this engine when Chrysler first produced it. The first was that it really was five engines kind of geared together, if you will, and so much so that the engines had their own water pumps that were belt driven. So you had five water pumps originally on this A57 engine. But you can guess that that didn't prove very successful. In fact, belts in some cases would snap because of varying loads across the engine. And Chrysler ended up going in short order to a single water pump design that was driven by an accessory shaft from the central gear located on the opposite side of the crankcase. In addition to redesigning the water pump to be a single unit versus the five individual units, Chrysler also fabricated that new single water pump out of more robust parts versus the five previous water pumps that really weren't any more durable than they were in an automotive application. And you can imagine that with the severe usage in these tanks that they needed something a little bit extra. In fact, cooling was generally the main issue with the Chrysler A57 multibank, at least in the early days, in part because of the water pumps that I mentioned, and also in part because of sealing issues around the radiator. And as I mentioned, take a look here, you can see a picture of the radiator in the A57 multibank, and notice the hole for the shaft to go through that I was mentioning before. <laughs> kind of a crazy design. I don't know that I've ever seen a shaft going through a radiator on another vehicle, but here you have it, and in the end, it ended up working. Now, further to the point that this really was based on five different engines that were connected together, each had its own distributor, and that was how this would continue from the start of the A57 engine to the end of its life. And originally, they did each have single-barrel carburetors mounted on the intake manifold for each of the five banks. However, that changed, thankfully, and the carburetors were moved and relocated to a place where they were at the top of the engine. That obviously made it a lot easier for mechanics to service and also simplified what were originally extremely complicated throttle linkages. I will say though that there were only two oil pumps in the A57 as opposed to five. One oil pump 
was a scavenger pump that effectively pumped oil to a remote reservoir where a second pump would pressurize that reservoir and then move the oil from that reservoir in a high pressure format to all the different banks of the engine. And that tended to work pretty well. Just a few more specifics on the A57. It was an undersquare design, meaning that the bore was smaller than the stroke. The A57, each cylinder had a 3.44 inch bore and a four and a half inch stroke. And when you multiply that by the 30 cylinders that were present on the A57, you get the displacement of 1,253 cubic inches. Power ratings kind of are a bit all over the map for these. Some say that they produced about 370 horsepower, some closer to 440, 445 horsepower. So not overly powerful from a horsepower standpoint, but certainly tons of torque and enough to move around these big, heavy tanks. And in fact, for some, the A57 Multibank was actually the preferred engine in the Sherman tanks. It ended up by the time World War II was nearly over, being an engine that had a great reputation for reliability, particularly after they solved some of the original cooling issues and made the engine more serviceable. They also made a number of other changes to improve the reliability of the engine, including using sodium-filled exhaust valves. This cured an early issue that a number of the multibank engines had. Let's take a look at some more photos of the multibank engine. This here is a picture of the multiple water pump type, as you note from the figure label. You can see the five water pumps, but take a look at the notation for the exhaust pipes. Notice that on the left side of the picture, you have an exhaust pipe that's for the number one, two, and three engines. Interesting that Chrysler actually called them separate engines here. But the right exhaust pipe is only for two engines. I guess, of course, you're going to have two exhaust pipes and five banks for the cylinders. One has to have three and one has to have two. But the same diameter outlet, no difference in that. Now, these engines weren't high RPM revers. So that really didn't make much of a difference because the Army wasn't going for horsepower, but really just for torque to be able to power these tanks. You can also see labels here denoting the five ignition coils as well as distributors. Here's a picture of the single water pump type unit. Notice there's no longer those five water pumps. You just have that single one with plumbing that goes to each of the banks. However, while that has changed, you notice that there are some other similarities, of course, including that exhaust setup where the number one and two and three engine feed into that left side exhaust and then the number four and five feed into that right exhaust. Overall, the A57, as I mentioned, ended up being a pretty reliable engine. In fact, its reliability was pretty much on par with the Ford GAA V8, which obviously was much less complicated. So the beautiful thing about this Chrysler A57 engine was that while it was indeed very complicated, it did use quite a few parts from effectively an automotive engine, those inline six cylinder engines that Chrysler was using. And it was relatively easy to service, particularly after the water pump design was changed and the carburetors were relocated. And it provided good service life to the operators of the tanks. So it proved successful, and I think it's one of those amazing feats of Chrysler engineering and perhaps something that helped endow it with the reputation for being an engineering company. And as I said, perhaps the reason behind the original Pentastar logo giving the arrangement of these five cylinder banks on the A57 engine effectively mimic the Pentastar logo itself. Let's now close out this video with another video of one of these A57 engines running so you can just see how these 30 cylinders operating in harmony sound. Hope you enjoy.
Thanks for watching this video on the Chrysler Multibank engine. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right, including one on Ford's GAA V8 as suggestions for you.